Trusting Russian economic data has always been a challenge. At the Center for Eastern Studies, we've been monitoring the country's economic situation for years, providing insight into Russia's social, political, and economic landscape. And recently, there's even less reason to believe information on the state of the country's economy. Since the beginning of its invasion of Ukraine, the Kremlin has restricted access to statistical data, including those concerning foreign trade. On April 26, the government of the Russian Federation decided it would no longer report on the country's oil and gas output until April 1, 2024, making it nearly impossible to see the statistics of a sector that generates more than 20% of Russia's GDP. This decision was taken on an act passed in February this year, allowing the Kremlin to temporarily suspend the publication of any economic indicators. This makes it much easier for Russia to use statistics for propaganda purposes and convince the West and its own citizens of the country's resilience to sanctions and the costs of the war. The information released in recent years has repeatedly been accused of low reliability. The culprit is Rostat, the Russian statistics agency. Rostat regularly changed its methodology, the way it presented data, or the frequency of its publications, making it difficult, if not impossible, to compare them over the long term. It has also been particularly criticized for the 2021 census. According to Russian demographers, the data published therein does not reflect reality. The errors concern both the population size and the age and ethnic structures of Russian society. Rostat is accused of caving in to Kremlin pressure and de facto engaging in government propaganda. In 2017, the office was placed under the direct authority of the Ministry of Economic Development, which is responsible for implementing Russia's economic policy and achieving its macroeconomic goals. Control over Rostat was further strengthened by the appointment of two representatives of the ministry, neither of whom had experience in the field of statistics, as its consecutive presidents. In 2018, Pavel Malkov, who had previously served as a department director at the ministry, was appointed as the head of Rostat. In 2022, Malkov was promoted to governor of the Rizan Oblast. He was replaced last May by Sergei Galkin, who had previously served as the deputy minister of economic development. The scale and dynamics of the changes taking place in Russian economy and significant disparities between different sectors and regions make reliable analysis even more difficult. As a result, indicators such as GDP tell us less and less about the actual state of the Russian economy. The comparative base has, in the case of Russia, been changed dynamically in 2022. In January and February of last year, we saw a recovery in economic activity after two years of the pandemic. In contrast, in the first two months after the start of the invasion of Ukraine, businesses halted production, primarily due to sanctions, the collapse of imports, corporate boycotts, and the strong weakening of the Russian currency. During the second half of 2022, however, we saw companies adapting to the new conditions of foreign cooperation. At the same time, there was a dynamic increase in budget spending, which continued to stimulate economic activity in the first months of 2023. As a result, this fiscal stimulus is helping to mitigate the negative consequences of sanctions. Given the many objections to Rostat's work, statistics published in Russia should be approached with great caution. But in many cases, there is no data available other than that compiled by the agency. It's the only institution that has the capacity to collect and process data from all regions and sectors of the economy. What we can say is that Russian indicators presented by Rostat in recent months show that financial, production and human resources have been focused on industries supporting the war. This is being done at the expense of other sectors of the economy, especially those meeting consumer demand. As a result, industries that carry out public procurement and receive budget funds are improving their performance, while production and companies affected by Western sanctions continues to fall. Thank you for watching. This video is based on an analysis written by Ivana Vishnevska, senior fellow at the Center for Eastern Studies, Russia Department. You'll find the link to the full document in the description box. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to never miss more stories like this one from the region.